Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Peep Squad is in the building, baby. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Real Housewives of Potomac. It is going down. So we are going to listen to how the beef started between Monique Samuels and Candace Dillard for season five, how it went down, and how they had a split in their relationship and done with each other. But first, we're going to listen to Jamal Bryan explain what he thinks he knows what went down and you guys tell me your opinion please like comment and subscribe let's get to it move on hey don't teamed up with your best friend beautiful lord and uh, generated a story um because you wanted to read that thought a story was getting ready to break that your baby is from your trainer then upset because he thought Giselle leaked it. And I want to tell you, Monique and Chris, it, it is not Giselle who leaked that, but uh, Monique, your best friend, Gigi. Uh, we, we had nothing to do with it. Um, you came um, hostile and angry, and it was misdirected rage. Misdirected rage um, because... I was cheating on Chris and that the baby wasn't Chris's. All of this while I'm having a high-risk pregnancy. I had to stop working out because I almost lost my baby. Chase, I almost lost him at eight weeks pregnant. And I've said this before, people already know this. I was eight weeks, my doctor sent me in for early ultrasound because I had a miscarriage. So he wanted to check and make sure things were okay. Lo and behold, the, the sack was tearing on both sides. So he put me on a high risk um, bed rest for eight weeks. So I couldn't do anything. He told me not even to lift my babies. He said, you can't have sex. You can't do anything. Yeah. He know. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't do anything. So, and then the pregnancy was pretty difficult. Now we're going into the uh, filming season. Going into the filming season, right before we start filming, Karen calls me. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe Giselle. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Wait, am I, am I going out of order? What are you talking about? Did I know about, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this happened before we started filming season four. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So she's like, oh my God, I can't believe Giselle. And I'm like, what? And she says she's, no, that was after. I'm mixing yeah, up two I, time periods. Like okay, anyway, so. let me back up. Yeah, I'm thinking about, the following year after Andy's baby shower. So prior to Andy's baby shower, I was pregnant. The rumors were circulating from Gigi, uh, the former friend, I just said her name. I didn't even want to say her name. It's like demonic saying her name. Okay, former friend goes to Gigi, um, goes to Sharice. Then she ends up um, gathering up whatever little circle. Sharice starts spreading the message to the whole group. Candace knew about all of this because she asked her for Sharice's number. And she gave it to her. <laughs> so the fact that she didn't understand how me and Sharice weren't clicking is absolute BS. So anyway, we going into the filming season. Um, they wanted to bring all of this to the show. And one thing y'all know about me is that I don't play when it comes to my family. You can say whatever you want about me, but you're not going to involve my kids, my husband. That's where I draw the line. I was almost like this for season four. I was about to not even come back because I was a high risk pregnancy. And I was like, I don't want to be around that negative energy and I'm carrying a baby. Like, I don't even want to do it. So everything was like, production didn't want to touch it. They were like, this is disgusting for her to even try to spread these rumors. This is nasty. They didn't want to even deal with it. They was like completely disgusting. But you had a few women on the show who wanted to bring it to camera. They were like, yeah, we're going to take her down and we're going to expose and put all of this stuff out there. They wanted to bring this nonsense to the show. We go the whole season. Candace brought up the former friend's name twice while we were filming. And I'm just looking at her like, wow, like, really? Giselle brings her up. None of that ever aired. Wasn't surprised when Giselle did it. I mean, we're not friends and I already know she's hateful and miserable. So we go the whole season season's done now comes the baby now comes andy's baby shower they all get together it was candace uh giselle robin and a few other people 
they all get together and they have this dinner after the shower and they begin to plot on me. So apparently Giselle starts saying that she's going to bring this to reunion and I'm going to tell people that Chase isn't Chris's. And whoever was at the dinner was basically like, well, that's not going to fly. Then Candace spoke up and said, Chase looks just like Chris. Like nobody's going to believe that. So they had to go from a different angle, I guess. So I didn't even know about any of this until Karen called me. Karen calls me and she said, I can't believe Giselle. And I'm like, what happened? So she's like, what do you mean what happened? All the stuff she was saying about you. And I was like, what was she saying about me? What are you talking about? She's like, wait, Candace didn't call you? I said, I have not heard from Candace. I said, honestly, Karen, Candace and I don't talk like that. I was like, we talk when we're filming. I said, but when it's off season, the only time we talk is if I reach out to her. So Karen was like, I cannot believe she told she didn't call and tell you. I'm like, can you please just tell me what you're talking about? She said, yeah, so Giselle is planning to go to reunion and to tell people at like during the reunion that Chase isn't Chris's and that you were cheating on him and, and that's not his baby. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, how disgusting is it, number one? Like I said, you can say whatever you want to say about me, but to talk about my child? Now, if somebody talked about any one of Giselle's daughters or even the illegitimates from her ex, she will go berserk. So to bring up my child's name, when you know the mess ain't true, how low down and disgusting is that? So now we have two situations going on here. We got Karen telling me what she's telling me. Nobody else is saying anything to me. So I'm just like, okay, well, we, we could just go and ride this out and see what happens. Candace never came to me with it. She never told me until we were about to start filming season five. So this is coming into season five. Candace only told me because I asked her about it. And I said, what was about this dinner, this, that, and the other? And then she proceeds to tell me the same thing that Karen says. But she left out her part in the conversation. So apparently she was actually cheerleading the whole conversation because she had talked to the former friend. So she's cheerleading and doing all of this stuff. So I'm finding out bits and pieces as we go along. And before anybody else asks and says anything about the whole fight, this whole situation had nothing to do with the fight. Absolutely not. One thing that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to talk about people's kids and I'm not going to spread lies and rumors. The only time I ever talked any type of nonsense on this show that was gossipy was about Sherman. But guess what? That wasn't a lie. That actually happened. And I apologize for bringing that even to the forefront because it had happened so long ago. But one thing I will not do is tell lies on people. I will not sit back and try to destroy somebody's family. And I just don't play that. And I don't appreciate that people running around here protesting, talk about Black Lives Matter, but they sitting here trying to destroy a whole black family off of some reality TV entertainment BS because they have nothing else to talk about. So you want to keep coming after me. So when people keep saying, oh, Monique needs self-control and she's this and she's that, at the end of the day, you get to a point where you're fed up. Now, what y'all need to understand is that I spent two years, two years, it's been two years since they tried to start all this stuff. And I have had to be professional and work with these heifers and still show up and put a smile on my face. So when y'all sit back and y'all saying, oh, you forgave Giselle for what she did. No, I never forgave anything. She never brought it to me. So it just, it was left as it was. And I never forgave that. I had to be a professional and show up and do my job. And that's what I did. Now, the problem that I have with Candace is Candace was showing me a friendly face, but then she was doing some real shady crap behind my back. So now I'm confused and I'm like, wait, if Giselle's doing this crap, I get it. I don't fool with her. She's not my friend. I'm expecting for a person who says they're my friend who we just patched up and said, look, we're going to do better by each other. We're going to look out. I'm expecting for that friend to consider me the same way I would consider them. And that didn't happen. So that's the problem that I have with her. And while she's sitting here on live saying my child's name, which she should not be doing, but she's a child herself. So God forgive her while she's out here trying to clean, clean up her mess. She's throwing everybody else under the bus. And she finally actually further clarified some of the things that I had been hearing that I didn't even know were completely true. So 
You got Candace out here throwing crap, hiding her hand. You got Sharice out here throwing crap, hiding her hand. Now, no, Sharice didn't start the rumor, but she definitely contributed. And I know for a fact, her, the former friend, and another chick were literally on the phone at nights having three-way conversations. And they were literally plotting. How disgusting. How nasty. When you are a woman who, have, who has been through divorce, who has dealt with infidelity with your own husband, and, and from what Giselle says, with yourself, with the fireman. Like, what the heck? And the thing that sucks the most about it is that they all know that it's some made up BS. Now, for, I'm gonna address something about Ashley right now. So while y'all sitting back and y'all saying, oh, you didn't do this with Ashley and you moved on with Ashley. Well, guess what Ashley did? Ashley, once we made up, Ashley told me about everything that was going on. She wasn't at the dinner and she did not want to play any parts in what was going on. And every time that a camera was in her face and she was expected to start speaking on these nasty rumors, Ashley and Michael shut the crap down. And they said, we are absolutely not talking about Monique, Chris, their children or anything else. And they shut it down. And every time she shut it down, she then called me and gave me a heads up as to what was going on. So while y'all sitting here talking about Ashley, Ashley has been more of a friend to me than Candace on a rainy day. So what else y'all need to know? Chris or my, you know, anybody, any of the girls, I know what happens in all cast scenes, but I do not know what happens in scenes that I'm not a part of in confessionals like that moment in Giselle's confessional, floored, jaw drop, had no idea that was going to happen, shocked, shocked, shocked me. I, Chris and I were watching, we get the episode early, we watched after anniversary party, was it before Ashley's or after Ashley's dinner? It was before. It was before. It had to be before. This was before Ashley's dinner. And hi guys, anybody that's just coming in, it's story time. Um, oh, I, okay, I'm going to read some of these comments in a minute. Um, so, I later, after everything happened and I was kind of putting the pieces together for myself, I was like, thinking to myself, like, there was just this sudden buildup to animosity toward me from Monique. And I was trying to figure out, like, where is this coming from? Like, we had gone to lunch at the beginning of the season. One of the first scenes that was filmed for season five was the flashback to Monique and I being at lunch, where I was, my hair was pulled back in a little pony, and I was, like, crying, of course. Um, that was, like, one of the first scenes. We had, we had talked there. Um, we had had a lot of conversations. And um, what are you doing? Huh? He's being weird. Um, so we had a lot of conversations. And um, I forgot I was going with this. Sorry, I'm like, I'm such a space kid. I'm so, I don't, rem I'm like, my brain is everywhere. But, um, what was I, what was I, what was the point I was trying to make? That Monique never told, mentioned anything about Charisse. Right. So, that's the bottom. Huh? Ever. Ever. So that's the bottom line. I talked to Monique so many times between her talking to, going to lunch with Giselle and, and everything and she never mentioned Sharice to me but that's what I was gonna say was that um oh god um Jesus Christ. I know my brain this is what stress does to you like I can't remember anything um I was gonna oh the point was the point was, I remember now, the point was I knew that something was wrong. Something had gone afoot. Um, and I started kind of putting it together and somehow I kind of realized that whatever the catalyst for 
this like switch on Monique's part happened at lunch with Giselle. And I said that from October on. I said it to anybody who would listen. I said it to producers. I said it to the girls. I said it to Karen. I said it to Giselle. I said it to Robin. I said it to everybody. I said it to Chris, my mom, everybody. I was like, I don't know what was said, but I know that something was said at that lunch because that is when things started to flip. Lo and behold, I, like all of you at home, was watching the episode and it's just these, Giselle just brought a whole bag of Duracell batteries with her to lunch. She just, one at a time, just inserting batteries in her back and just winding her up. Um, and then again at the dinner for Ashley, and I, I tweeted this, but I also wanted to tell you, so when Karen and I were sitting at dinner, at the bar where I had the hat on and Karen's fussing about not having honey mustard and all that. Um, when I got the text inviting me to Ashley's dinner, I called Monique to say, hey, did you mean to send this to me? Is it really all right if I come? She said to me, yes. I asked Ashley if it was okay for you to be there and Ashley said it would be okay for you to come. And I said, okay, great. I just want to make sure that my presence will be expected and as welcomed as possible because at no time ever are the name tags and the whole moving of the butter knives. It's like, okay, production told you to do that. That's cute. Um, I won't say what I was going to say. Um, but watching Giselle pass along this rumor that coming from forehead that I was per I purposely inviting Sharice. Say hi to Chris. Purposely inviting Sharice around to get back at Monique. Um, my first question is, who told you that? Where'd you hear that from? Because I talked to Sharice about it almost immediately. I was like, did you say this? And she was like, no. And I believe Sharice. Um, so then we, if we go back and look at the history of Ashley, Ashley and her, um, I'll be nice. Ashley is, is known for pulling bullshit out of her ass. And I'm assuming that this was the latest piece of bullshit she pulled out of her ass because her asshole was ripped. This is probably how she ripped her asshole for real, was pulling this big ass piece of bullshit out of her ass. This big ass lie you pulled out of your asshole, now your fucking ass is ripped. This is what your ass gets. It wasn't her baby, it was the lie. Um, I'm very curious to know where that came from. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna hear no Phaedra shit. Oh, I just heard it. No, where'd it come from? Did you make it up? Did you and Giselle make it up? Did you and the Grim Reaper make it up? Did you and Michael Darby make it up? Y'all was bored one night? I won't say what I was gonna say. See, I'm, I'm reformed. I'm, I'm editing myself here. Um, where'd that come from? Because exclusive, extra, extra. You hear and read all about it. Y'all can screenshot this. Give this to the blogs if you so choose. I never invited Sharice anywhere. And I never had any plans or intentions to use Sharice Jackson Jordan to get back at Monique Samuels or anybody else. I repeat, I never conspired to use Sharice to get back at Monique. And there are several reasons for this. Number one... That's just not how I roll. I just don't do things like that. Like if I'm, you should know me my, know me by now. If I'm going to get you, getting you is going to involve me cussing and or yelling and or crying or some combination of, of those. I don't plot. I haven't had to do that. I mean, maybe I need to change the way I move if that's how the group is going to move. I don't, I don't do that. Why would I plot 
to bring Sharice around to get, and how, how am I getting back at Sharice by bringing, or getting back at Monique to bring Sharice around? Number two, Sharice was not on the show. She wasn't a friend of the show. She wasn't a guest of the show. She was not a full-time housewife. She wasn't receiving a paycheck from Bravo. Why, what sense does it make to bring her around if she's not on the show? Like, kind of like how Kendall was a friend of the show or a guest of the show, or she was auditioning for the show. She was getting a paycheck from the show and Monique was bringing her a newsflash. This is another extra, extra, put pr press rec screen record on this one. The information that Sharice knows that Monique said Sharice was spreading nasty rumors. I already know that information. I've had that information for two years. I mean, I'm sure there's more that's been added to it that I don't know, but the bulk of that, I have known. And you know who knows that information? My husband. You know who else knows that information that came from my mouth? Nobody. I did not tell a single soul not about only, that information. Not only that, you, you wrote a statement for Monique. Also, so then I'm getting to that. So this information that she's trying so hard to, um, you're not coming off the villain, you're being yourself. Thank you, Instamall. Um, hi, Peaches Palace. Um, y'all are a mess. Um, oh, shit, what was I saying? The information that you had. Yes. You wrote a statement. So the information that I had Somebody was going around, well, I'll just say, Gigi was going around telling everybody this information. Gigi's Monique's ex-best friend. She called me, she called Sharice, she called, and I'll tell you this too. I was cool with Gigi because that was Monique's best friend. And Monique and I, when we were friends, a friend of Monique's is a friend of mine. Gigi was always at the house when we were over at the Samuels house. Um, Gigi and I talked, I invited her and her husband to our Christmas party, as well as the Samuels, as well as Hank. Um, and we were friends. So on occasion we would talk, we would text very like, Hey girl, how you doing? Whatever, whatever. Nothing heavy. There was a particular day I was in my office. I remember this day I was in my office and Gigi texted me and said, Hey, can you give me Sharice's number? I said, okay, sure. I sent her, I gave her Sharice's number. Didn't ask any questions, I figured. At the time, remember, we were all still friends. And I didn't think anything of it. I People ask me to give so-and-so so-and-so's number all the time. And as long as we're all in the same circles, I have no problem doing it. So I gave her um, Sharice's number. Come to find out, Gigi was starting to spread all these, all this information about Monique and some of which you heard Giselle say in her confessional. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Um, she was telling me, she told Cherie, she told some of production. Everybody knew. So the, we're at a production meeting one day. And Monique is telling us at the at a table, at the table, that yeah, Gigi was saying this and this and this and spreading this information. And I was like, oh, well, actually, Gigi called me too. I just wrote it off as her being angry and I told Chris and we decided that it wasn't even worth mentioning. Never never brought it up again, never mentioned it again. And Monique was like, oh my God, you have this information. Well, I need to get her to stop. Would you mind uh, writing a statement so that I can serve her with a cease and desist? And I said, of course, sure, because Monique was my friend first. My loyalty was to Monique. So, hi. Hi, Jules. Yes, my pageant shirt. Um, my, my loyalty was, was to Monique. So I wrote, I wrote the statement. And I'm, I'm assuming that Monique was successful in getting a cease and desist. Um, and it was never brought up again. I never mentioned the information again. So then I go back to my original point. I knew the information that Sharice was supposedly spreading. Um, and it wasn't really Sharice, it was Gigi. Gigi had called everybody up 
in all in the phone book. She just opened a phone book and was calling everybody in the phone book. But I don't. There was apparently a, a rumor about another plot between Gigi and Sharice to get back at Monique. Sharice told me that's not true. Um, I have I had no, no idea about that. I've heard that in the streets, but I don't know if it's true. But I, Monique said on the episode that Sharice is in the streets spreading rumors about her family. Um, and I supposedly knew this. I did not know that Sharice was spreading rumors about her family. I knew that Sharice and Monique had issues from when Sharice was on the show. But that was at this, at this time, two years ago, right? Almost two years ago. So that beef has been squashed. Monique wasn't talking about Sharice. Sharice was not a topic of conversation. I don't have pregnancy brain. I just have a bad memory. I have bad short-term memory. Um, so, see, I just forgot what I was going to say. It's, I have bad short-term memory. Um, but no. So, this idea that I knew something and was privy to some harebrained scheme plot is cod liver bs and sh and ashley is cod liver trash for spreading that rumor and spreading that lie wherever she got it from her asshole she's trash for spreading that because that also contributed to what eventually became everything that you are ready to see and it's funny how the people that monique is calling her friends Giselle at the time and Ashley are the two main water hoses just watering this seed and making Monique look like a dummy. You look stupid. You have a big ass kick me sign on your back and you don't even know it's there. And it was Giselle and Ashley that put it there. I hope you are sleeping well. Um, so that's that's that. Thank you, lady, to be in with that person. It's like the song, if loving you was wrong, I don't want to be right. You, you will go off the side of a cliff to be on the right side with the person that you want approval from. I do believe that Monique has always sought out Giselle's approval. I think that from the very, I think, I mean, she obviously watched the show before the show started. And Giselle is billed as the face of Potomac, the star of the show. And Monique thought before she got on the show that, um, I don't know this, I'm just, it's just me guessing, that, oh, I can, like, I'm going to get on and I'm going to be besties with Giselle and we're going to run Potomac together. And she got on the show and it was like, whoop, dream kill. Because Giselle was like, nah, I ain't feeling you. Who, who, who's you? Who you? Um... And she does it to everybody. She kind of sunned me. She gave me the cold shoulder. And I was like, okay, like, pass the peas. What's next? Um, and we eventually got to a good place. But I think it really bothered Monique that she wasn't friends with Giselle. And I think that she was maybe jealous of Giselle and Robin having the very tight-knit friendship that they have on and off camera um and she jumped at the chance to be something more with Giselle and this is this is just from watching that lunch scene and watching them at the dinner before everybody else arrived I'm just reading nonverbals. I'm reading body language I'm also remembering how the the evil sort of mischievous dancing in Monique's eyes was while she was sitting across from me on the same side as her new master and and Robin just like just clawing at me. I've never done that I never did that I never invited anyone anywhere to be shady ever 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 no if I did I would say that I did I would say yeah I did that to be shady, but I, I, I've never done that. I've never done that. And I would say it if I did. I would honestly say it if I did. Never done that. But yes, Monique has done that. She purposely invited Kendall around to ruffle Giselle's feathers. 
that was done. And then she tried to blame it all on Sharice and make it all Sharice's issue and all Sharice's thing. And it wasn't. They were, they were working in tandem. And then Sharice got demoted. And I, well, this is the season that I came in. Sharice started out as a full-time housewife and I was kind of in the, in limbo. I was in purgatory. They were trying to figure out what they were going to do with me. And when they decided that they were going to bring me on full time and demote Sharice, Sharice no longer had personal story. So her plans to bring Kendall around kind of halted there because she no, was no longer full time. And she was also probably a little shocked that, well, damn, like they, they demoted me. So Monique picked up where Sharice left off and started inviting Kendall around everywhere to events to get back at Giselle. Yes, she does do that. And that's another point that you all should remember is that people who are shady and evil and do vindictive things often project that same energy onto other people because that's how you think. Because you think that way, because that's the kind of person that you are. Of course, you're going to think that everybody else is like that. But I was not raised that way. That's not what